What's more terrifying than death itself? Perhaps not dying, but being buried anyway. While it sounds like something out of a gothic novel, it's happened more often than we'd like to imagine. In the 18th and 19th centuries, there's this huge fear of being buried alive. Yes, some of this fear comes from works of fiction, and those are inspired by very real cases. And it's a real enough possibility for doctors to test for, well, death. They devised a number of tests for physicians and morticians to ensure that a person is actually dead before they are to be buried. They are generally unpleasant experiences. We're talking pliers on nipples, rinsing out the mouth with urine, and tobacco smoke enemas. I don't really know why regular enemas weren't enough, but the tobacco smoke enemas are where we landed on this. And yes, this apparently is where the phrase blowing smoke up one's ass comes from. The thinking is that if they create something that is unpleasant enough and they subject a potentially dead person to said experience, the people who are not actually dead will respond to that treatment and then declare themselves as not being dead. And those who are dead won't mind. Thankfully, these tests are phased out in the early 20th century, so we'll never know. Could they have prevented the fate of one Angelo Hayes? So it's 1937, we're in France, and Angelo Hayes, young guy, loves to ride his motorcycle, and he does not like wearing a helmet. And one day, he's riding his motorcycle very fast, loses control of it, and he crashes headfirst into a brick wall. Hayes has so much head trauma, and it's so gruesome, they won't even let his family see the body. They think it will be so distressing. He suffers extensive facial injuries, and these injuries are so bad that his face is unrecognizable. He has no signs of life. He is declared dead at the scene, and he is sent directly to the morgue. So three days after the accident, his family buries him in their very small village of saint quentin de chalet and he would still be there had it not been for a life insurance company that gets a little suspicious. Two weeks before Angelo's accident, his family takes out a life insurance policy worth the equivalent of 200,000 in today's dollars. A big policy for a 19-year-old in 1937. It all seems a little bit suspicious, especially seeing as it was taken out just weeks before. The insurance company sends two investigators and they actually exhume his body. They open up the casket and it turns out, this man is not dead. He's not conscious, but he has a heartbeat, uh, albeit very slow, and he also has a very reduced respiratory rate. Surviving the motorcycle crash is a miracle on its own, but being buried alive and not succumbing to such horrific injuries even after three days, how is this possible? He's in a coma, and when you're in a coma, your metabolic rate is so low that you don't need much air to survive. So they promptly take him to a hospital, and he makes a full recovery. So being declared dead obviously has a profound effect on Angelo, and he ends up inventing a whole other type of coffin just in case this happens to somebody else. It includes a food locker, an oxygen supply, and a radio transmitter, so a person who is buried alive can call for help. The funny thing is, for, for all the effort that he expended on designing this, this thing, there's no evidence that anyone ever bought a single unit. I guess that after being buried alive for three days, Angelo wasn't taking any chances. <laughs> 